teachers slash professors of Reddit. How did you secretly get back at that kid? I taught English at a Ritzy private school in South Korea. We weren't allowed to discipline the kids for any reason, no matter what, because the school was making money from the tuition. For the most part the kids, grade 5 to 6, were pretty good, but there was this one kid. He was a little shit about everything, always disruptive, bullying the other kids, throwing pencils, writing swear words in Korean on the whiteboard before class, never listening, etc. I started eating a lot of kimchi on the days I taught that specific class, which gave me wicked indigestion. When I walked by the kid I would let out these horrible silent creeping hot farts. No one ever blames the teacher, and after a couple weeks he became known as the farty kid. He was still a little shit, but it made me feel better knowing that he was knocked down a few pegs. My stats professor said he saw a group of really talkative and distracting kids doing well, and he thought it was fishy. He looked at the tests and saw that they were all the same answers, then he looked at the seating chart and noticed that they could all look over each other's shoulders to the front of the class where the smart quiet girl sat. Solution, give her a different test, only her. When he handed back the tests, he told everyone who got under a certain grade, like a 50% to come see him. Each student got like a 10% or something. When they were alone, he basically said well, this is your punishment for cheating. Don't do it again. I thought that was awesome. These two girls in my Akin class were cheating all the time. They turned in this paper on the Federal Reserve that didn't get picked up with the plagiarism checker, but they both turned in the exact same paper as each other. I told them you guys did a great job on this paper, you get 50%, and you get 50%. In retrospect I shouldn't have done it in front of the class. There was a kid in my class who always was cheating on my tests and quizzes. I caught him several times and contacted the parents, but nothing was ever really done about it, aside from the fact that he got zeros if I caught him. I don't think his mom ever really believed he was cheating as much as he was, and there were plenty of times I probably didn't catch him. Once on the midterm, he missed the test. He came back the day I gave the kid their scores back which also had the answers, but not the questions. I saw him sneakily talking to his friends and they gave him their papers that had the answers on them. I didn't say anything, but the makeup midterm has the same questions with all of the answer choices moved over by one letter. Little bastard got a 3% on a multiple choice midterm. I assume he must have read one question and then copied the rest from his friends. Justice. Not secretly, but I learned to take copious notes and have a file on every student. Lazy students will often try to throw the blame on the teacher. I had two students request a meeting with the dean of students to discuss my unfair grading, and I showed up with a stack of evidence. Every substantive and person interaction was documented on the front of the file, and I included copies of every ML and note on the inside. There's nothing more embarrassing than coming face to face with your own laziness and being unable to wriggle free. They started paying attention after that. Not a teacher, but back when I was in high school a student had sex with the coach's daughter in the locker rooms. The coach made that kid's life hell making him run around the school who knows how many times and just working him to exhaustion for about two months. After that, the daughter was caught having sex with three other guys at a party and the coach realized his daughter was a slut. I was in a class where the professor had the two blatant plagiarists stand up and read both of their papers at the same time. Halfway through without even looking at them, and his eyes turned to a wall he set out the last conclusion statement. Turns out they stole from his own body of work and they changed just enough of the paper to make it past the checker, but he reads every paper anyways. It was the most awkward and hilarious thing I have watched to this day. He then told them that each paper they wrote would be read out loud by them after each submission and he would personally grade their papers. They also had to sit at the front and he would call on them with every open-ended question first. To be clear he was furious that these two stole from him, call it their ideas, change it into a weaker structure, and complain about their low grade. He crushed them, it was great. My favorite English teacher once led a discussion about Vietnam War novel the things they carried into a discussion about drugs and paranoia in order to fuck with the dude that always showed up to class high. 
she didn't look at him once just kept saying stuff to fuck with him, while, might I add, actually leading a very interesting conversation about drug abuse in Vietnam. I was sitting across the room from him, and he looked like he was dying. I have taught physics at the college level, and my experience was that that kid kids would inevitably fail. It turns out someone who brazenly copies their homework doesn't learn enough to pass the exams, for example. So hey, no need to plan revenge, they would do it to themselves. High school teacher here. Had a little shit of a kid we'll call Anthony. Complained about everything, did no work whatsoever, talked shit about everyone, made fun of kids with disabilities, you name it. And, of course, he was always the first to start shrieking that he was the victim in every situation, everyone was against him, how come he always got picked on and so forth. Now, in my teaching career, which has spanned the better part of a decade so far, I've taught more than a thousand kids. Plenty of those have been bad kids. The thing about bad kids, though, is they are usually bad for fairly simple reasons. Shit going on at home. Unmedicated or undiagnosed mental illness. Trauma in their past. Hell, maybe just lonely. If you pay attention, you can find out why almost any kid is acting out. That said, out of 1000 plus kids, I've encountered maybe 10 who are genuinely broken people. You could call them sociopaths. No trace of empathy, no trace of conscience or even in a life. People who basically exist to serve their own desires, exclusively, and have no compunctions about how they might most quickly realize those desires. Anthony was one of those kids. The worst thing about him was his constant tendency to immediately shit upon anything that anyone else had put effort into, including my lessons. We would nearly have these very vulnerable tender moments in the classroom, where kids were talking about big important issues and really growing intellectually in awesome and uncomfortable ways, and then Anthony would call them fucking gay or whatever else. One day, this girl Patrice, an incredibly sweet girl, sensitive, with an artist's heart, is sharing something in class for the first time. Visibly nervous shaky voice. Anthony, of course, begins making fun of her hair, her glasses, her face. Loud enough that it's plausibly a whisper, but loud enough, so that we can all hear what he's saying. I start walking toward his desk, but am interrupted when Patrice very very calmly says, fuck you, Anthony. The entire class was dead silent. This girl never spoke, let alone swore, and she said it with such self-control. Everyone's eyes are on me, waiting for me to react. Anthony starts screaming, did you hear that? She said fuck. You always get me in trouble, when I say fuck, this shit ain't fair, how this ugly bitch gonna? I say ha. Huh. I didn't hear anything, turn back around, and continue the lesson. A few kids cheered. It felt really good. Not me, but this happened to my friends. Our bonus project in physics was making an egg mobile, a vehicle designed to move an egg using only the power of an elastic band. The mark you got for this project would replace the lowest test score you got on the unit tests during the year. Two of my friends worked together on one. One friend was average student, while the other friend was fairly smart, but pushy and argumentative, a real Steve Jobs type. They constructed their reg mobile out of Lego, and it did work, however the physics teacher was a little tired of friend number 2 at this point of the year. The mark he gave was enough to give student 1 a nice boost, however it was 1 point lower that student 2's lowest test score. My abnormal psych, a 400 level class, so you would assume people in this class were interested in the field, had us visit a local homeless shelter. This was an accelerated night class, so classes were 4 hours long. She arranged for us to go during our normal class time. A few people in the class felt it was dumb or a waste of time, and bailed just as the tour was starting. The final exam for that class was about 4 questions that were very easy to answer, if you stayed for the whole tour and absolutely impossible, if you did not. A lot of the guys in my high school were dipped during school, chewing tobacco. Most of the teachers would just roll their eyes, tell them to spit it out, and confiscate the rest. A couple teachers that were known for punishing teens who were dipping and would go as far as suspending them for it. One of those teachers enjoyed fucking with her students. If she realized you were dipping, she'd give you an out. You could either admit to dipping and get sent to the office for disciplinary action or you could drink from the spit bottle that you were pretending was a coke. 
I saw too many classmates try to avoid punishment by taking a big swig, only to rush off to the bathroom to vomit. Can't say they didn't know the risk before they walked in though. <laughs> High school teacher. I have had a number of challenging students in my 15 years as a public school teacher. These kids sometimes don't know how to act. They might lash out and treat teachers with disrespect. They might blow off assignments and make other choices that increase the burdens of my job. So, you get back at them by offering them extra retention. Helping them grow by seeking productive ways to correct their behavior. Challenging their academic failures by offering help outside school hours. Addressing holistic problems by circling the wagons and bringing outside resources to bear, including guidance, administration, and parents in a cooperative effort to encourage growth. I get back at that kid by helping him or her get past being that kid. In the end, we can both sit back and laugh at how hard it sometimes feels to mature. Not a teacher, but a student who got back at that teacher. In my sophomore year, I transferred to a small Catholic high school because I was bullied pretty badly at my public high school. I was very eager to show my teachers I would work hard and my parents that I wanted to improve my grades. English has always been my strong suit, so I was excited when my English teacher assigned us four essay questions the first day for the scholar letter. I started to work on them from the moment I got home to the moment I went to bed. I was very excited and knew my answers were very in-depth and delved into the symbolism that Hawthorne is famous for. Let me note that I used absolutely no outside sources for my answers, only my mind and the book. When I got to class, I excitedly handed them to Mrs. Lee Rian couldn't wait till she graded them. Silly me. She handed them back with my answers crossed out and the word plagiarism written in huge red letters across the top. I was heartbroken. I didn't know what to do, so I said nothing. The next three assignments, the same thing happened. On the fourth, I came out of school crying. My aunt was picking me up that day because my mom had a meeting. My aunt was pissed. My aunt is a very cool lady and gets along with everyone, but when she gets mad, hell hath no fury. She marched into the school and reamed Lee Rhee out. Lee reacted all apologetic blah, blah, blah. So the next assignment, I was happy to get back. But guess what? Same thing happened. Big red X's, and at the top, read and define the word plagiarism. So, it became clear I needed to take matters into my own hands. I asked what the problem with my paper was, and she said it was obviously beyond your reading comprehension level. So I said, listen, lady, I don't know what your reading comprehension level is, but I'm not going to dumb my work down for you. I was sent to the principal, whom I showed all 5 assignments. She got quite a kick out of it. I guess she was awful to everyone, because she ended up getting fired. Fuck you, Mrs. Leary. <laughs> had a terrible student who was obnoxious and disruptive. He had no respect for anyone, including his classmates. I gave him a class participation grade that was just low enough to have him fail the class. Twice. He tried to appeal it, but it wasn't appealable. He changed majors and the professors in his new major hate him too. My class participation grade should really be called the don't be a fudgeted grade. 